Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch him, and say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. To reach out and touch Him. And say that we love Him. Open our ears, Lord, and cause us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Oh, isn't that true? We want to see Jesus. We want to feel his touch. We want to know him more. And here we have come to the last day of March, March 31. Wow. And isn't it true? There, It's like a big jump to say March 31st and then tomorrow to say April 1st. And as people tomorrow will be playing their little April Fool jokes, really the hint of spring is so much stronger in the air, isn't it? April, I mean, it just makes you think of flowers beginning to bloom and new green leaves on trees. And so on this March 31st, we will enjoy every last day of this month that is like a struggle to come in to spring. Lots of last minute snowstorms up north and plenty of wind. And so all of that, created by our Heavenly Father, isn't it? All of it. He is the creator of the seasons. So we would like to say that we are staying in a season of reading the Word of God on this last day of March 31. And uh, this reading today brings in their wonderful festival of Passover, the spring festivals, okay? So the timing of this is really wonderful. I welcome each and every one of you, you, Linda, and Kathy, and everyone who's coming on to hear the Word of God for today. We will be reading Deuteronomy, Dabarim, chapter 16, and going on into chapter 17. So let us observe and listen and see what the Lord would speak to your heart. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover to the Lord your God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord your God brought you out of Egypt by night. Therefore you shall sacrifice the Passover to the Lord your God from the flock and the herd in the place where the Lord chooses to put his name. And, you know, it has become so, um, we just know his name is all over Jerusalem, right? His name is there. You shall eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread with it. That is the bread of affliction. For you came out of the land of Egypt in haste, that you may remember the day in which you came out of the land of Egypt all the days of your life. That's God's intention, that you never forget how the Jews came out. Even though we're Gentiles, we've been grafted in. We are a part of the family of God. And no leaven shall be seen among you in all your territory for seven days, nor shall any of the meat which you sacrifice the first day at twilight remain overnight until morning. 
uh, here are some instructions that they still they still follow. You may not sacrifice the Passover within any of your gates, which the Lord your God gives you, but at the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide, there you shall sacrifice the Passover at twilight, at the going down of the sun, at the time you came out of Egypt. And not only that, but it's the opposite. We start, we say our day begins in the morning. And the Jews say their day begins at sundown. Going through the night and the day. So we have these differences, don't we? <laughs> and you shall roast and eat it in the place which the Lord your God chooses. And in the morning you shall turn and go to your tents. Six days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there shall be a great assembly to the Lord your God. You shall do no work on it. <clears throat> you shall count seven weeks for yourself. Begin to count the seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the grain. And then you shall keep the feast of weeks to the Lord your God with the tribute of a freewill offering from your hand, which you shall give as the Lord your God blesses you. You shall rejoice before the Lord your God, you and your son and your daughter, your male servant and your female servant, the Levite, who is within your gates, the stranger and the fatherless and the widow who are among you at the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. And you should remember that you were a slave in Egypt and you shall be careful to observe these statutes. You shall observe the Feast of Tabernacles, seven days, when you have gathered from your threshing floor and from your winepress, and you shall rejoice in your feast, you and your son and your daughter, your male servant and your female servant, and the Levite and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow who are within your gates. Seven days, you shall keep a sacred feast to the Lord your God in the place which the Lord chooses, because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce and in all the work of your hands, so that you surely rejoice. Everyone will rejoice in all of the work. It is a time to take off and celebrate. Connie says she lost me immediately, but I'm hoping that you have me now. <laughs> I pray so. I wonder why that is. Except I know the warfare is stronger, y'all, okay? The warfare is heating up. We might as well admit it. And I purposely chose this cup, this precious cup, that our little sister Maria bought for me in Washington, D.C. at the President's gift shop or wherever. And you see the gold. It starts with George Washington and every single president's name is on this cup down to Donald John Trump. And I'm very glad there was no more room on the cup. So let's just have a, a celebration swig here as we are talking about these beautiful spring festivals. <clears throat> Seven days you shall keep a sacred feast to the Lord your God in the place which the Lord chooses, because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce and in all the work of your hands so that you surely rejoice. 
Three times a year all your males shall appear before the Lord your God in the place which he chooses, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, at the Feast of Weeks, and at the Feast of Tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. <clears throat> I have made it a practice to bring my tithe of money to the church service every week because of that one sentence has so impressed me. Do not appear before the Lord empty-handed. I don't write a monthly check or six weeks or whatever and say, well, there, I've taken care of that. No, I want to have the live occasion of bringing it to every service and putting it in. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. You shall appoint judges and officers in all your gates, which the Lord your God gives you according to your tribes. And they shall judge the people with just judgment. You shall not pervert justice. Hello, America. You shall not pervert justice. You shall not show partiality, nor take a bribe. For a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the righteous. Did you get that? So true. You shall follow what is altogether just, that you may live and inherit the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not plant for yourself any tree as a wooden image near the altar which you build for yourself to the Lord your God. You shall not set up a sacred pillar, which the Lord your God hates. You shall not, and this is moving along here to chapter 17 of Dabarim. You shall not sacrifice to the Lord your God a bull or sheep which has any blemish or defect, for that is an abomination to the Lord your God. If there is found among you within any of your gates, which the Lord your God gives you, a man or a woman who has been wicked in the sight of the Lord your God, in transgressing his covenant, who has gone and served other gods and worshiped them, either the sun or moon or any of the hosts of heaven, which I, Moses, have not commanded. And it is told you, and you hear of it. Then you shall inquire diligently, and if it is indeed true and certain that such an abomination has been committed in Israel, then you shall bring out to your gates that man or woman who has committed that wicked thing, and shall stone to death that man or woman with stones. What a terrible way to die. Terrible. Whoever is deserving of death shall be put to death on the testimony of two or three witnesses. He shall not be put to death on the testimony of one witness. The hands of the witnesses shall be the first against him to put him to death. And afterward, the hands of all the people. Boy, the Old Testament was tough, wasn't it? <clears throat> so you shall put away the evil from among you. If a matter arises which is too hard for you to judge between degrees of guilt for bloodshed, between one judgment or another, or between one punishment or another, matters of controversy within your gates, then 
you shall arise and go up to the place which the Lord your God chooses, and you shall come to the priests, the Levites, and to the judge there in those days, and inquire of them. They shall pronounce upon you the sentence of judgment. You shall do according to the sentence which they pronounce upon you in that place, which the Lord chooses. And you shall be careful to do according to all that they order you, according to the sentence of the law in which they instruct you, according to the judgment <clears throat> which they tell you, you shall do. You put that matter in their hands, <clears throat> and then you are obligated to follow through with what they say. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left from the sentence which they pronounce upon you. Now the man who acts presumptuously and will not heed the priest who stands to minister there before the Lord your God or the judge, that man shall die. So you shall put away the evil from Israel and all the people shall hear and fear and no longer act presumptuously. When you come to the land which the Lord your God is giving you and possess it and dwell in it and say, I will set a king over me like all the nations that are around me. You shall surely set a king over you, whom the Lord your God chooses. And that was not his first way that he wanted you to do it, was it? The Lord is enough over us. But they wanted a king like all the other nations. So the Lord said, okay, I'll give you one, but you're not going to like it. One from among your brethren you shall set as king over you. You may not set a foreigner over you who is not your brother. And oh, don't we see how our world today is messed up because of these very sentences right here. But he shall not multiply horses for himself nor cause the people to return to Egypt to multiply horses. For the Lord has said to you, you shall not return that way again. There was no turning around to go back as far as the Lord was concerned. Neither shall he multiply wives for himself, lest his heart turns away. Nor shall he greatly multiply silver and gold for himself. Also, it shall be when he sits on the throne of his kingdom that he shall write for himself a copy of this law in a book from the one before the priests, the Levites, and it shall be with him and he shall read it all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord his God and be careful to observe all the words of this law and these statutes that his heart may not be lifted above his brethren, that he may not turn aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left and that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children, in the midst of Israel. And there you have it, plain and simple, what the Lord wanted. Hallelujah. That is why we pick this up every day and I pray that you do 
and you may be hearing this in the middle of the night because of your work schedule or whatever. But please, keep your Bible beside you. You know, yesterday I read from a different translation because I could not find my Bible. Oh, up till two minutes of seven. I was out in the car, here, there, everywhere, texting my daughter, did I leave it over at your house? Couldn't find it. Guess where I left it? At the car wash. The car was done. I got up to pay the young man, left my Bible laying on the picnic table I was sitting on. <clears throat> Finally found it at a quarter of five. And that precious lady said she looked all through it. I was really glad she looked all through it. Ah, okay. To see if she could find a name or a telephone number. They had it saved for me. Let me tell you, that's the place I will wash my car with that kind of treatment. We move right along now to Luke, Lou Silas. Scott has taught us to chapter 9, and we will pick up with verse 7. 9, verse 7. Connie, I'm glad you're here. Sharon is here. Oh, hallelujah. My sweet sisters. Luke 9, 7. Now Herod, the Tetrarch, heard of all that was done by him, by Jesus. And he was perplexed. Because it was said by some that John had risen from the dead. And by some that Elijah had appeared. And by others that one of the old prophets had risen again. And I'm going to stop right there and comment. Cindy says you left it there for a reason. A seed was planted. And I'm going to agree with that statement with you, Cindy. I'm going to agree that that lady is not going to forget pouring through my Bible because my Bible is marked everywhere. <laughs> As you well know, I'm sure she looked and went, whoa, man, surely this lady's coming back for this Bible. And I did. Herod said, Herod was very troubled here, wasn't he? Very troubled. And he had good reason because of his statement. Herod said, John, I have beheaded. I can't imagine having that on your conscience. But who is this of whom I hear such things? So he sought to see him. It doesn't say he sought to grab him and kill him too. It says he sought to see him. So there's a little fear of God happening here, don't you think? And the apostles, when they had returned, told him all that they had done. And he took them and he went aside privately, Jesus, into a deserted place belonging to the city of Bethsaida. But when the multitudes knew it, the multitudes were saying, where did he go? <laughs> they didn't want to lose sight of him. They followed him and he received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God. And he healed those who had the need of healing. When the day began to wear away, the twelve came and said to him, Send the multitude away, that they may go into the surrounding towns and country and lodge and get provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. You talk about an astounding statement. They're out in a deserted place. You give them something to eat. And they said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we go and buy food for all these people. And listen how many. For there were about 5,000 men. How long would that take? And then to haul it back out to where they were. Impossible situation. 
And then he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of 50. And they did so. And they made them all sit down. Now, can you imagine what they were thinking? What's going to happen? Why are we supposed to sit down? And, and in groups of 50. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. There's the important part. Looking up to heaven, to his heavenly father. He blessed and broke them. A move of faith with his prayer and his blessing. He began to break this little bit that he had. And he gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. But look at the next sentence. So they all ate, all 5,000, and were filled. They just didn't get a little hors d'oeuvre. They were filled. And then 12 baskets of the leftover fragments were taken up by them. Leftovers. Everybody totally filled with food and leftovers to pick up. And it happened as he was alone praying that his disciples joined him. And he asked them, saying, who do the crowds say that I am? So they answered and they said, John the Baptist, but some say Elijah. And others say that one of the old prophets has risen again. And he said to them, this was his point, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said, the Christ of God, Christ, Mashiach, Messiah. And he strictly warned them and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. And then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That is what you get to do today. Whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, there is a day that is laid out here before us, and only the Lord knows what is all in it. Everyone, take up his cross daily and follow me. And you want to say, well, but he died on the cross once for all, it says as though we were just free as a bird to do anything. No, if you're going to follow him and be like him, there is a path for you that is like his. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. 
read all of this again. You will be amazed at what jumps off the page to your understanding. But I tell you truly, Jesus says, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. Wow. Wow. There's no other Messiah ever been born or ever will be born that can say those words. And furthermore, when he cried, it is finished from the cross, what he's telling them was set in motion. There was no wondering anymore. It was set in motion. We move right along to Psalm 72. Another Psalm. This is a Psalm of Solomon. <clears throat> we are finishing up all these 71 Psalms of David. And we are moving along to his son, Solomon. Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. Referring to Solomon. He will judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. The mountains will bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. He will bring justice to the poor of the people. He will save the children of the needy and will break in pieces the oppressor whose name is the devil, Satan. They shall fear you as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. He shall come down like rain upon the grass before mowing, like showers that water the earth. In his days, the righteous shall flourish and abundance of peace until the moon is no more. We don't know when that is, do we? Or if it is. <laughs> He shall have dominion also from sea to sea. And from the river, capital R on river, so we must be talking about the Jordan, to the ends of the earth. Those who dwell in the wilderness will bow before him. And his enemies will lick the dust. The king's of Tarshish and of the isles will bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba will offer gifts. Yes, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. For he will deliver the needy when he cries, the poor also and him who has no helper. He will spare the poor and the needy and will save the souls of the needy. He will redeem their life from oppression and violence. And precious shall be their blood in his sight. And he shall live. And the gold of Sheba will be given to him. Prayer also will be made for him continually, and daily he shall be praised. Now, they thought they were talking about the king, and they were. They were. But do you see the double meaning here? Do you see the king, Jesus, in this reading? There will be an abundance abundance of grain in the earth on the top of the mountains its fruit shall wave like Lebanon and those of the city shall flourish like grass of the earth his name shall endure forever his name shall continue as long as the sun 
S-U-N. And men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Oh, won't that be a wonderful day and age. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only does wondrous things. And blessed be his glorious name forever, forever and ever and ever and ever. Oh, that's when hearing that beautiful music in the Messiah, everyone jumps to their feet in the audience. When those words are proclaimed, blessed be his glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. One of the places where so be it and so be it are repeated. Not just one amen, two. And then it concludes here in verse 20. The prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. And we wrap up today's wonderful reading. Oh my goodness, my heart is, is getting so blessed. How about yours? We wrap it up with Proverbs 12, verses 8 and 9. Proverbs chapter 12, Mishle, verses 8 and 9. A man will be commended according to his wisdom. But he who is of a perverse heart will be despised. Do we not have that example happening in our world today? But he who is of a perverse heart will be despised. Better is the one who is slighted but has a servant. Then he who honors himself but lacks bread. Wow. Now there is a proverb to read several different times and to meditate upon. Selah. Selah. God bless you, each and every one of you. I'm so excited. To, to have a calling from the Lord, to just sit here in my little kitchen every day and we read the Word of God together. Even though we're not together, we feel like we are, don't we? And we're just doing a simple version. We could be doing, you know, a much deeper one. But see, my point that I feel God has said to me is to just, to a very readable one. And people like our dear brother in Christ, Scott, you know, he's gone on to study until, I mean, this is just like pablum to him. This is like kindergarten to him. But we are reading it out so that God can take it anywhere he wants to. And we are believing that people who've never read the Word of God and who don't even want to. I mean, if it's even suggested, they just dismiss that thought. We pray that an understandable reading will strike their hearts and perhaps they'll come back. And I've had people tell me that that's exactly what they did or I wouldn't even say these words. I've had people walk up to me and say, I listen to you every day. Really? They never put their name down, which is fine. You don't have to put your name down if you don't want to. But I'm amazed and blessed because God is doing his thing. So let's wrap it up in prayer. Let's wrap it up in prayer. Father God, we are so grateful and thankful to you for this word, your everlasting word. We thank you, Lord, that we are privileged 
to have it in our hands. There are yet people on this earth who they want so much to have a Bible. They are so hoping that some missionary, somebody comes and brings Bibles. And I've had that experience on my very first mission trip to Russia. They would just, you'd hand it to them and their eyes would get big and they would go. And they would quickly put it under their coat. And we were told that they could be killed on the way home by anybody who knew they had that Bible. The Bible was so stirred up by God in their hearts to want. And here we were, freely standing in Russia on street corners with huge boxes, thousands and thousands of new testimonies in Russian. And we all said, we, we can't be doing this in America, standing on a street corner without a lot of ridicule. And in Russia, at that time, people flocked to us, flocked. Guards left their stations and came like little kids with their hand out, can I have one? Father God, Father God, as I bring forth that memory, I am so grateful you allowed me to go and you allowed me to see that and you allowed me to help. Lord, I am praying and our brothers and sisters here are praying that a great hunger, thirst, revival like that break out in America to where people would run down the sidewalk to someone who had boxes of Bibles and want one, and not to just sit at home, but to open and read, to study, to enjoy, to appreciate, to treasure. Oh, Father God, stir us up. Stir us up, we missionaries of this day and age. Hallelujah, stir us up. Stir us to order some Bibles and go hand them out. Go stand and see who would like one. Stir us up, Lord, because we are so grateful that we have enjoyed your word. Father God, we hold up Jerusalem always. We hold up Jerusalem. We pray for her. We pray for her peace today. Her peace, Lord. We bless you for this city that is close to your heart, where Jesus walked, where he taught. Precious Lord, where his feet left the earth and where he will return and put those precious feet back down on the earth and come to rule and reign. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The Lamb, Yeshua, Jesus. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for the peace. Lord, I hold up to you all of the families and the parents and the children of this terrible school massacre. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, what a horrible thing. And my heart aches that that person who did it found themselves in that kind of a state that they would do that. My heart aches for the whole thing. And I know yours does. And so, Father God, please, we lift up all who are involved, including the police and, and everybody who's going to investigate. Lord, <clears throat> there's going to be many reasons they're saying they need a motive. Well, I think portions of the motive are very evident. Lord, we're asking for truth to come. We're asking for truth. And we bless you and we thank you for it. 
Lord, I ask for a special blessing upon Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, this wonderful man who has come back for another season to be leadership in wonderful Israel. Use him, precious God, please, in a wondrous way. Use him. Use the Knesset, Lord, to bring about your will in Israel today. Father God, I hold up America to you. And Lord, at this time when it's like a pot that is stirred up hot and flaming, bubbling, wanting to bubble over, Satan trying to stir up all kinds of trouble. Precious God, we stand against Satan in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind his wise, his ways that he thinks should prevail as he exerts his last stand of power. Father God, our prayers go higher to you. And so we have chosen this weapon of prayer to you who sits in the third heaven, who is truly Lord of Lords, King of Kings, we appeal to you, Lord, to tear down evil plots and plans, to take evil people out of office places, and to put in righteous people. Precious Father, we turn to you and we cry out to you in our prayer life. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would continue yet longer to use America and all that you've given us to be used for your missions, Lord, everywhere in this world, your missions, giving freely, giving enthusiastically from our hearts to tried and true missions who are really doing a job of bringing salvation, the message of the gospel to all the people of the earth. And we wanna thank you for that, Lord. We wanna thank you for these all of these technologies that have been developed to help with that. These cell phones, most of all, everyone has one. Everyone has the availability to hear good ministries that are on and available through your cell phone. Oh, Father God, I'd ask that you'd hear the prayers of all the brothers and sisters all of the friends, all of the people who maybe have come for the very first time, maybe this will be the first time that you pray a prayer to the Lord and ask him to come into your heart, that you give over all the things that weigh you down and give them to the Lord. He has answers for you. He's waiting for you to come. And so, Father God, we thank you for this time that you've given us. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And all of God's people cried a hearty, amen, amen. I love you all so much. Bye-bye.